Hi there, Sam Flegel here, and before I get started, I'm going to explain some of the materials that I'm using. Uh, for ink, I like to use Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star Waterproof India Ink, and I select matte because I want it to be able to scan without having a bunch of problems with gloss or glare. That gray paper you see me using is Strathmore Toned Gray Mixed Media Paper. Uh, it's a 400 series from Strathmore, and it is a excellent thick paper. They do also make it in a tan uh, if you prefer to work, but I find for inks that uh, it looks better on gray tones, but if you do choose to use a brown ink, that can look quite nice on the tan paper. As for brushes, I use the Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes. I just, I love them so much. They're great at holding a point and they've lasted me at this point for years, and I've been able to use them time and again as long as you care for them. And I use a zero, one, two, and three round brushes. Now the workhorse brush for this piece is primarily the two, uh, but I also used the one and the zero quite a lot. I did not use the three all that much, and that's mostly because of size. Uh, this piece is 11 by 14, and so I didn't really want to, you know, worry about trying to use a huge brush at that size. But if I was working larger, that three would come in very handy. And finally, towards the end of the video, you'll see me use both black and white colored pencils, and those are Prismacolor pencils. And then you'll also see me come in with just a little bit of golden fluid acrylic titanium white. And that's something I do at the very end to add just a pop of white, which looks really great on this gray tone paper. Now, obviously, I did forget to mention one material, which is the basic pencil. I like to use a 2H pencil for sketching, and then I'll refine my sketch with a 2B to get some of that a little darker. And so all of that gray tone that you see on the image already, that is just pencil. That's, that's traditional graphite lead pencil. And that's how I start most of my ink drawings in order to map out what's going on, particularly when I work on this gray tone paper. If I were to work on a white paper, I might actually use a light box and have the drawing show through. But on this gray paper, it's so thick and dark that light boxes do not work very well. So I just go in with pencils. And this time around, I did not start with any reference. I just went in and, and drew a face and started playing around with things. I find it's best to start without reference, but then I did gather up the reference that I needed. Uh, in this case, I used some old headshots that I had from a model who I've used on other projects. That's something that I do and something I recommend when you have a model in the studio. Go ahead and do some well-lighted, you know, 360 or 180 degrees around the model's head. And you never know when those will come in handy later. But that's something I try to do with all my models so that just moving forward, I, I can use those for little projects like this where I don't want to hire a model and do a full photo shoot. This was just me having fun in ink. Um, but I did reference an actual female human head. Uh, and throughout this process and you know I did look around through my other references at things like armor and feathers and that sort of thing so you'll see my hand occasionally moving over to the side and that's usually me messing with my iPad where I've loaded up all my references right there next to where I'm working so I don't have to leave the table in order to search for things as I need them I, I tend to gather those references after I finish the initial pencil drawing, and then I do the 2B pencil, the darker pencil drawing with reference over the top of that. And it just makes the whole process cleaner, tighter, and uh, produces a much better finished product as well. Now, I don't think there's any particular secret or golden tip or brush or tool that I can give you to suddenly make you good at inking. The real reason that I've found that I'm good at inking or have developed my skills with inking is that I inked a lot. When I worked on the Illustrated Habamal, I produced 44 ink drawings, and then later on the Veluspa, I did over 60 ink drawings. And since doing that volume of a project in ink, I've just felt more confident with the brush. Now, an interesting side effect is that after working on those ink pro projects so long, when I went back to oil paint, I found that a lot of the brush skills did transfer. But yeah, if you want to ink with the brush, the secret is ink with a brush. 
uh, just do lots and lots of it. And I'd even recommend doing some free form projects where you maybe didn't have a pencil drawing underneath and you just went in with line and, and started playing around with all the different shapes and textures you can get when making a brush. A big part of this is that this is my hand. This is the brush I like, and this is how I like to work. If I handed another professional artist these same tools, they might get similar results or they might get very drastic results. And that's why different artists like different tools, uh, like so many things. People drive different cars. People like different food. Uh, we're all different creatures. And so you've got to try stuff. If you want to try what I'm using, please, by all means. That's why I listed the, the tools at the front of this thing. But don't expect you're just going to sit down and get exactly the same results. You might use these tools and say, Sam, why do you like this stuff? These, these brushes are stiff. This ink is stale. I, you know, I just, I don't, I don't like it. Well, that's fine. You know, obviously, you know, do the things that feel right to you. So much of art is doing what feels right and then just practicing often. So again, if you want to get better at inks, the real secret is make about a hundred ink drawings uh, and, and, you know, carefully uh, pay attention and craft and make each one better than the last. And yeah, you'll get better at inking too. Uh, over to the side, I do have a small little palette that I put a little ink well on and that I'm constantly dipping the ink in. And I find that, you know, when, when the brush is fully loaded with the ink, that's when I come in and you'll see me do those thick lines. And I typically start at the base that's thick and then you'll see me pull my hand across and get to a thinner point. And then sometimes when I have that thinner point, I'll use the what's called a dry brush or a, a brush that's no longer fully loaded with ink in order to get different textures or to get kind of a feathered out effect. Uh, and that's something that, again, you, you have to get a feel for, um, but, but that's how you control the volume of the ink. Now I do get asked, ink is permanent. What about mistakes? Well, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, it, it'd be hard to make a true mistake. I mean, obviously if I dropped a big old bunch of ink in the center of the thing, that might be hard to fix. But when it comes to these feathers, you know, they're so fluid and fun and their, their shape is not fully required or defined. And, and I'm sure you've seen as I've been inking along here that I don't always exactly follow the form of the pencil drawing underneath. Sometimes I go in and I do something very different with the ink. And, you know, that's that's totally OK. Uh, you know, you, you can uh, make it what you need it to be. Now, one other tool that I didn't mention was the Micron pen. I use a 01 and I primarily just use this for the eyes uh, because they require such detail and delicacy. Uh, if there's another part of the piece that I feel requires that level of detail, I'll use pen from time to time. But for the most part, I, I'm, I prefer the brush. I just like the feel of it. I, I can get more different lines and it's way faster for me to work but again when things are delicate the micron is handy something i love about the gray tone paper is that if you come in with black and white colored pencils you can get such a different level that black pencil actually looks like a light gray and i wanted this character to have the feel of tattoos on her face uh, she is a cleric of frig in my DD game my wife plays this character her name's cole frosta frig's daughter and Cole Frosta has tattoos. In fact, in, in my particular game, all the clerics have tattoos representing their faith. That's how one identifies a cleric in this world. And so I knew I wanted tattoos, and I just thought it'd be cool if I did them in black and white colored pencil. And then I've come in and you can see I'm starting to shade the drawing, again, very lightly in colored pencil, adding more texture, adding another layer to things, uh, and I just, I, I really think it's cool. This isn't something I do if I was using white paper. This is a unique technique with the Strathmore mixed media gray tone paper. Again, if I was working on the tan paper, I'd come in with a, a sepia pencil or an umber pencil, something that had a nice brown color to it and you could get this, this secondary layer. But you'll also note that I do this after I've finished the inks. Then I also come in with a white colored pencil that's again just a white Prismacolor pencil and I start shading in those highlights. This is where reference really helps out because uh, I, can, I can look at the shadows on an actual human face 
and then decide how I want the shadows to look on my drawing and then come in and just pick out all the little highlights throughout the piece. You can see I went back in and shaded the eyes again, kind of pushing and pulling, going back and forth. Um, and it's, it's particularly great for metallic things because you can really make that metal texture shine and not put any of those whites anywhere else on the drawing. Um, and then at the end, I often come and put just a thin white line at certain areas around the drawing to really make it pop out from the background. And I, I just think it looks really nice uh, when I'm able to do that. And then as a final thing, I come in with a brush and I'm using that titanium acrylic white and I just put a dot on the nose, on the eyes, and on the lips. Then I sign it and I'm done. Here's the final drawing. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It was fun to do and I hope you learned a little bit about inking as well. All right, talk to you next time. I'd like to thank all of you who support my art at the Fateful Signs Patreon. You make videos like this possible. You all are amazing. If you like this video, head on over to FatefulSigns.com and sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a PDF copy of the first chapter from the Illustrated Havamal when you do. Thank you.